Hi, Dr. Yas here. In this video, we're going to try to make a connection between lower back pain and a common postural variation, which is a representation of the cause of the pain as well as the postural variation. For almost everybody, I get the strong sense that when they have lower back pain, the typical means of going to the medical establishment to establish cause usually involves getting an MRI, finding a herniated disc, stenosis, or arthritis, some structural variation of the lumbar spine, and simply accepting that because the structural variation is identified at the time of the pain, it is asserted to be the cause of the pain. The problem with the existing medical establishment is that's where the diagnostics ends. It's simply in identifying a structural variation. And that's simply not enough. If you recognize that the purpose of symptoms is to help you become aware of what tissue is in distress because of the fact that that tissue is the tissue eliciting those very symptoms being experienced, then you would have to recognize that you have to look at the overall body's presentation to establish what all the symptoms might be that are going to help to explain what tissue is in distress. It is just way too easy and unfortunately a false premise to believe that just because the structural variation is identified at the time you're having the pain, it's the cause. Every bit of evidence proves that's not true. Number one, it's using a concept called correlative theory, which simply says that just because the herniated disc is found at the time of the pain, it's the cause. We could easily say that the MRI would find that you have two elbows. Therefore, we could say that two elbows is the cause of your pain. You can see how stupid that is. Uh, greater studies have shown that as many people without pain have the same structural variations in the same percentages, which then eliminates the idea that the structural variation could actually be the cause of pain. All the failed surgeries associated with the structural variations uh, have shown that clearly they are not the cause of pain. It's just really endless as to the evidence that this use of MRI is baseless and that it really moves you away from the core principle of what you're trying to do which is to interpret the body's presentation of symptoms because those symptoms are coming from the tissue in distress so when you have lower back pain you need to establish whether the cause is muscular or whether it's structural and i am telling you from personal experience after treating people for almost three decades that in more than 98 to 99% of cases, the cause of lower back pain is muscular. Now, I can make that statement and you would either have to believe me or not believe me, just as you would have to believe the MRI or not believe the MRI. But what I'd rather you do is say to yourself, are there any other symptoms that would confirm the idea that the cause is muscular? And the answer is yes. If muscle is strained and eliciting pain, since muscle attaches to bone, you would expect that there would be some sort of postural variation to go along with the pain that the muscle is creating. There might be movement pattern variations, and I'll explain that also. So if we could find other corroborating symptoms to confirm that the tissue in distress, the one eliciting your pain at your lower back is muscle, that should justify the idea that it's muscular and therefore the attempt to resolve the pain should come through resolving the muscular deficits associated with elic eliciting pain. So I wanted to start by showing you a picture of two people and, and looking at their lower back and I simply want you to say, which does my lower back look like? If you're suffering from lower back pain, look at this picture and then look at yourself from the side and you say, which one do I look like more? And if you look like one more than the other, that's going to help us determine whether the cause is muscular or not. So this is the picture. And this is of a normal spine. And this is a spine known as an anterior tilt. And what they're pointed to with the anterior tilt is the pelvis. So if we looked at the back of this guy's pelvis and the front of his pelvis, you would see that they're level and you would see that the line of his shirt is clearly level, horizontal. 
when we look at this guy, we notice that the front of the pelvis is pointing down. It is much lower than the back of the pelvis. And then if you look at the line of his shirt, you'll see it's pointing down. That anterior tilt of the pelvis causes an excessive arching of the lower back. And the creation of this altered posture is a muscular deficit. So my question, you, you don't have to take words as the truth. I think a picture is worth a thousand words. So just look at yourself in the side, from the side in a mirror and just look and see. Is your pelvis level or is your pelvis drawn down in the front, creating an anterior tilt of the pelvis and an increased arching of the lower back? If you have a representation when you're looking at yourself from the side that looks more like this, then this would represent that the pain you're experiencing in your lower back is muscular. There is no possible way that stenosis, arthritis, or herniated, there's some structural variation could alter your posture. Muscles are responsible for posture because muscles attach to bones. And when there is a weakness or imbalance of muscle, it alters the position of the bones, which is what you see here, an excessive arching of the lower back. All right, so quite simply, Look at yourself from the back. You're having lower back pain. I'm sorry, look at yourself from the side. If you notice that your pelvis is level, well, then you probably don't have a muscular cause. But if you're having an anterior tilt and an increased arching of your lower back, and it might not be as severe as this, but as long as you're seeing that shirt line pointing down slightly, then the highest probability is that you have a very specific muscular deficit creating your lower back pain. Now I'm going to show you the next picture which represents the muscular deficit associated with it. Here is a picture of an anterior tilt and what you see, you can see this is kind of, right? This is the normal. Uh, here's the normal one. Oops. This is the normal. You can see this is just a nice mild lower back arch and all his muscles are balanced and you see that the pelvis is basically level. Then we look at the anterior tilt and you can see that down here and you can see like I told you the pelvis is now pointed down. Now look at what the cause is. You see this reddened here? It says shortened and tight quadricep muscles long and weakened hamstring muscles. If you notice, everyone thinks of these muscles because they're attached in the thigh relate to the knee. But if you notice here, you're gonna see that they're actually attached to the pelvis, the hamstrings to the back, the quads to the front. And if the quadricep muscles end up being stronger than the hamstring muscles, they will shorten. And when they shorten, they pull the front of the pelvis down, which creates the arching and the anterior tilt. Could everyone see that? So you get an excessive arch, your lower back muscles become short and tight due to, so the, the big problem that the medical system has is that this is where you're experiencing your pain. And so the natural inclination for the medical system is to say, well, since this is where your pain is, it must the cause must be here. I am telling you now that in 99.999% of all the cases I've treated, the cause of pain is not where the pain is being experienced. In this case, the cause of pain in the lower back is due to an imbalance between the front thigh and back thigh. And here you could see that when that front thigh is stronger than the back thigh, see it's stronger, it gets tighter. It shortens, and when it shortens, it pulls on the front of the pelvis, causing the back of the pelvis to rise, causing the excessive arching, causing the low back muscles to shorten and strain. So here is a representation of the muscular cause that is leading to your lower back pain. So this should no longer be perceived as, oh, I have lower back pain, therefore I should assume it's a structural variation at the lower back. This is a real representation of when you have lower back pain and you simultaneously see an excessive arching of the lower back. It is an imbalance between the front thigh and back thigh muscles. 
Now, from a functional standpoint, if you are having this lower back pain and you are having this imbalance, you would find that when you go to bend down, you might find difficulty if you stay bent over for a period of time, you might find it difficult to be able to stand back up, right up. You might find that you have to kind of push on your thighs to get yourself to stand up. And then once you're up over a little bit of time, that symptom seems to decrease, right? If you're sitting in a chair, you might find sitting in a chair very hard because you develop low back pain. You might see that the sitting in the chair might be tolerable or maybe it's hard, but certainly when you go to stand up, oh my God, the pain from the lower back after sitting for a while is increased. That is because when you go to sit in the chair, the, the quadricep muscles have shortened severely because instead of your thigh being under your torso at 180 degrees, it's now 90 degrees when you're sitting. And the idea is that your lower back, from being slightly the normal arching, is supposed to be able to reverse when you sit. So you're supposed to go from an arch to a hunch when you sit. But if you have the front of the pelvis being pulled down by the quadriceps, it loses its ability to round. So if I was to look at you from the side and you're sitting, I might find that you're still in an arched position, which is not the correct way the lower back should be when sitting. These are the functional presentations of the cause of your lower back pain being muscular. So we have a postural deficit and we have a functional deficit. If you're finding this is the way life is for you and that you're seeing that change in your posture, there is no possible way that you could accept the idea that the cause of your pain is structural in any fashion. And this idea that just because it's found means that it is the cause of your pain, you must recognize that this is baseless. And I am getting to recognize that due to the fact that this has been promoted to you for 40 years, it has been culturally ingrained in you and therefore you truly believe because every doctor is saying it, it must be true. I have to humbly disagree with that position and make you recognize that the truth is the truth. What is absolute is absolute. What is being promoted to you by the medical establishment is junk science. This is pure science. This is analyzing symptoms to interpret the tissue and distress creating the symptoms. That is exactly the way the body works. That is exactly why the body elicits symptoms. When you sneeze or you cough, do you think that's just arbitrary? It was just accidental. It came out of nowhere. In both cases, there's an irritant either in the throat or the nose, and the body has recognized that and is trying to clear it. That's why you get the symptom of sneezing or coughing. Pain is the same concept. It is a representation of a tissue in distress. It is not neurological, that's a fallacy. All tissues primarily have pain receptors that run within the connective tissue of the cells that make up the tissue, and those could be elicited when the tissue is in distress. So lower back pain does not automatically mean nerve pain. In the highest number of cases, it is muscular, more than 98 to 99 percent of cases. And a change in posture and a change in functional presentation or capacity are all indicators of muscular causes. All right. Hopefully it's going to start sinking into people. I'm doing these Zoom and Skype sessions and I'm finding that the majority of people with lower back pain have these presentations and yet they have never been educated to look at what are very obvious, very clear clinical indicators that the pain is muscular and specifically which muscles and yet nobody has talked to them about this because it's not part of the medical establishment means of diagnosing and treating. That is strictly diagnostic test finding. That's what we choose. And the failure in it that method has clearly been proven. I mean, you're talking about 40 years, we're up to over, uh, almost a billion people worldwide, 130 million Americans suffering from chronic pain. There's clearly a reason. It's not you. It's not that you haven't responded correctly to the correct treatment. It's not that it's in your head. It's not that the medication didn't work. It's quite simply the tissue in distress continues to be in distress because you're treating the wrong tissue, which is the basis of chronic pain. Misdiagnosis equals chronic pain. 
That's a clear indicator based on what has happened in the medical system, all right? So if you like this video and it's making sense to you, please give it a thumbs up. If you like my channel, YouTube channel, Dr. Mitchell Yas, please subscribe to get notifications when new videos are being added. I'm trying to get these on as much as possible. I hope you like them. The response has been very good. People feel when they see them that they are very educational, they are very insightful, and they're pre presented in a way that the average person can really understand what's happening with their body and now make better decisions about how to treat themselves. And hopefully, I hate to say it, but hopefully prevent them from getting that unnecessary surgery or being forced into becoming addicted to prescription pain medication or getting a radio frequency ablation, cauterizing a nerve or a rhizotomy, severing a nerve. You just don't want to go. These are irreversible paths that, that are very bad. They have no chance of resolving your pain. And yet they are constantly promoted by a system that has clearly failed. If you have questions and you want to contact me, contact me through my email address, drmitch at mitchellyas.com, D-R-M-I-T-C-H at M-I-T-C-H-E-L-L-Y-A-S-S.com, drmitch at mitchellyas.com. If you'd like me to help you evaluate yourself and if it does confirm through the evaluation that you have a muscular cause, if that is confirmed and we need to do exercise, I can do that as part of a Skype or Zoom session. So if you'd like to set up a Skype or Zoom session for an evaluation and treatment, please do so by contacting me at drmitch at mitchellyas.com. All right? I hope everybody's loving this stuff. It's spreading. We are winning the war. More and more people are coming to the Yas Method and leaving the medical establishment. And it makes me happy to the bottom of my soul to know that this is happening and I am a part of allowing people to be able to end their pain and regain, recapture the life that they had before and that they so justly deserve. All right, for now, Dr. Mitchell Yas wishing you a pain-free, fully functional life. Bye-bye for now.